Hey, this is Stimming. This time I got a brand new product from Native Instruments. I'm a little bit excited about it. The Machine Plus, a standalone machine version. The hardware is basically looks exactly like the machine MK3, but it has um, an SD card slot. It's a bit heavier. It's made out of metal, metal instead of plastic, and has two USB connectors. I think those are new. Um, and apart from that, it's, it looks pretty much the same. I can say the encoders are in a better quality. It was in the music store here in Hamburg to check it, and those feel much better than the one before. The 3 million function main knob is also feeling a bit better, I would say. All in all, it feels quite, um, quite rugged, maybe that's the right word. But don't forget to buy a deck saver when you order it, if you want to order it. Um, the deck saver is going to be your friend as soon as you want to um, move it in your backpack or something. Always buy deck savers. That's a good idea. All right, so um, just I switch it on and we skip all the, the little details that no one really needs. We want to make music, right? Okay, one tiny thing. There's a, some kind of lock mechanism on the, um, on the power plug. This is very, um, this is the first time I see it and it, it makes a lot of sense. It's pretty much, it, 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 there's like a, a locking mechanism in there and now you can, I can really um, um, pull it and it doesn't, doesn't go out. That's very nice. All right, so let's switch it on. Switching on. So the funny thing is when this thing um, switch is on for the very first time. It wants just like a mobile phone and um, it wants the Wi-Fi password. Like it, it scans the Wi-Fi uh, networks around and wants your password. And then it wants to be connected with your native ID. Otherwise it won't start properly. It really wants to talk to mom first and say, hey, I'm here. Um, are there any updates? And can I please send my usage data? Yeah, that was actually a little bit funny. And then it, it downloaded an update, a 700 megabyte update and asked me, and you want to install that update? And I felt like, okay, is this, a, is this thing a computer or is it an instrument? So it is definitely an instrument, but very close to a computer. Actually, there's an Intel Atom CPU in there. It has four gigabyte of RAM. Um, and when I heard about it the first time, which was two or three months ago, um, actually the first question I had at all was, is it able to stream audio from the card? And I can say, no, it's not possible, but it has four gigabyte of RAM. And any, I mean, like a 48 kilohertz WAV file with four gig, you can like play around like four hours of music just from outside the RAM. That's one thing. So it's not really necessarily a, a, a downside. Also the Sampler is capable of playing 64 voices, each sampler for each sound, and you can have 16 sounds in one group. So um, I'm pretty sure if, it's, if it would stream, that wouldn't be possible. So I understand Native for saying, okay, we want to load it into the RAM anyway. Um, yeah, but getting your own audio in here is possible simply through this SD card. Um, the operating system I have right now isn't the very latest because two effects are missing and that kind of stuff. There's only one um, output, one stereo output and a phone's output and one MIDI in-out pair and only one in input, stereo input. So that's not too much, especially if you compare it to the biggest competitor, which is the Akai with the CV outs and many more outputs. So it's obviously a little bit more into itself focused machine and not necessarily made for being the center for your whole studio with lots of other out gear, outboard gear. 
Yeah, so that, that was something that I thought about. Also, another question that came into my mind was um, the sounds that come with it, the instruments, how will I be able to actually tweak them? And are there the real native instruments, instruments, or is it just like a, a sample set or whatever? So I can say now to make this clear, yes, it's the real FM8, it's the real Monarch, Massive and so on but you will not be able to tweak it completely on the machine. So yeah, let's make some sounds with it, right? Mm, I will not go into the detail of the machine. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's a very popular software already and um, very many people know how to use it. So you look for a tutorial or whatever. I just gonna make music right now. So I, um, I liked three sounds, the init sound from the Monarch, which we could do a bass with or a physical model for a guitar. Um, yeah, let's use this one. So this is the massive... Oh, there was a hiccup. Um, again, just to make this clear, it's not the final version of the software, so it's some kind of beta, but we don't know exactly. So um, um, if it's gonna crash or if it's, uh, if it's having some hiccups, I suppose it's because of it's a beta. I'm sure um, they're going to solve this. So this is the sound. Um, I can play it polyphonically, which is like, yeah, I um, checked especially this preset with the one on the computer and it's exactly the same. It sounds pretty much exactly the same. I would say on the highest quality in the computer, it sounds a tiny little bit better. So maybe this is, this is not necessarily the echo model, but it's not as the highest processing power. The eight macros. All right. So I also have to mention that I um, used the very first machine 10 years ago, probably. I used it on stage for just firing out some drums. And then I figured, okay, um, if I use software on stage, I don't need software inside the software, which is connected to a controller, um, which is probably the biggest problem machine always had, like the combination of a computer with all its positive and negative aspects in combination with the controller was always a little bit like, I don't know, it's, it didn't, didn't make any sense. So I have this thing for a week and I need to relearn the whole um, machine process. Um, what annoys me is the preview of a preset always is in C, which is annoying once you change your basic tone um, to somewhere else, which is definitely possible. Um, but yeah, okay, so um, I got a massive, what, by the way, what is it? The massive, the, the guitar sound is the massive, and you see like a little, um, you, a little window that shows, uh, um, that shows, yeah, it's the massive, and there's um, a beautiful um, sign, and underneath are the parameters. So this is also one thing that um, immediately came into my mind when I saw, okay, this, um, and I want to see like a, a simple picture of the of the synthesizer. Why don't you give me an interface that somehow like is better connected to what I'm actually playing because it's the original algorithm and I don't want to see a preview. So I'm I'm that's some for me this feels like okay this is definitely the heritage from the MK3 machine software, but it uh, in a in an standalone machine like this, it doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm really hoping that you're going to change that to not using this symbol and then I should look on the screen on the side. Um, okay, anyway, I was um, playing a Monarch bass. Okay. I 
hope you got headphones because this is a freaking deep bass. Um, you can um, write an automation without any problem. You just have to press auto. There you go. Okay, I go back to the, so we got a bass now. I go back to the, um, to the guitar type of thing. There are effects from native instruments, FM8, Machine Prism. Um, the one on this software missing is the Raum, the, their latest reverb, which is a bit of a shame because the internal reverbs that come with the Machine software are, are quite shitty. Um, yes, I, truly, like Electron is far better, but I'm sure the Raum software should be better. And the, some phaser is missing because the phaser and the, like the chorus, the, the phasing, the uh, modulation um, effects that come from Machine also don't sound very good, to be honest. So it makes total sense to include those two. Um, on the guitar, I will apply, let's say, oh, by the way, this is the list of sounds that are possible, uh, the, the list of effects that are possible. Saturation, lo-fi, grain stretch, grain delay, um, one, two, three, four, five versions of a bad sounding reverb. Um, chorus, flanger, and so on. A filter EQ for now. I want to use Grain Delay probably. Okay. Um, let's build a groove. I start new groups every time. The, those are the instruments that are on the highest level. If you don't want to use a specific native instruments algorithm, um, audio and sampler, I come back to that in a minute. Kick, snare, hi hat, tom, percussion, cymbal, and a bass synth. The bass synth is some type of 303 emulation. Um, and those are the kick, snare, and so on. Those are synths. So if I load a kick, ah, there was a hiccup. With different models. And of course, you can play them chromatically. It's also deep. You won't hear that on a um, laptop speaker. I just want to remind you wear headphones, please. So I, um, I was wrong with it. I need to redo it, I'm sorry. Okay, now it works. No, it didn't work again. Too bad. Okay, no worries. There's this percussion synth, which I really, really like. I'll give you an example of the sound. There's three engines, fractal. Kettle. Ah, that was a hiccup. And shaker. I don't know if you have recognized it, but the, the velocity responsiveness of the pads are so, so well balanced. It's a joy to play. Let me, um, let me put another, um, maybe a tom sound, for example. Ah, there was a hiccup.
Yeah, and then like one positive things about the machine um, always have been uh, the convenience in, for example, duplicating things. So I have this sound here, and if I want to duplicate it, I just press the first one and the second one, and then it's duplicated. So I can change it a tiny little bit, and then go into the mixer and make it and um, do them left, right, and then you get quite a broad. Um, a broad stereo field. I'm sorry, I need to do, uh, do I need to do something right here. Because I'm waiting for this last bar to play. Okay, so um, this is already, it's, it's not necessarily music, but it's an interesting loop. Um, let's go to the sampler first, before I show you what they made with the ideas and song structure, because this is very interesting how you can um, shape the arrangement view and the, um, the possibilities of like doing variations of stuff. So there's like two very main um, possibilities, which are both uh, very nice, but I come to that in a second. Let me go to the sampler first. I said, uh, okay, this is the sampling, but I wanna load. Let's talk about the audio first, because that's, very interesting. Um, I want to sample it internally, so I go to, in, on, to internal source, recording sync, I got it, how much? I think a four bar loop. Um, yeah, so it's waiting for me to, to restart the whole pattern and to play it. Oh, I got an over, oh, 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 too loud, oh, oh. Okay, switch it off. Do you hear a difference? No, that's fine. Um, so this is a recording of the main out, yeah? And now I can, um, for example, play everything slower. And uh, what it does is... It time stretches and it sounds pretty much like the modern technology, what the modern technology is capable of stretching, which is much better than 10 years ago, but it's still, you still hear artifacts and especially the first transients are like split into things. So um, pro tip, if you want to play a live set with it, it um, don't stretch the important bass drum, don't stretch the bass drum. Or well, the rest is not so much of a problem. Also, I wouldn't stretch a high hat, I suppose. So uh, accept that, accept that from the main out, and let this play as one shots, and then you're pretty fine. You have a quite a big range, actually. I didn't thought that the range would be so high. This audio player, container player, has two different modes. One is the loop one, which we heard right now, and the other one is the gate. Um, Oh, by the way, the audio is always, the loop is always playing in the background, which I'm, I need a, a trigger mode, to be honest, to give it like a, um, some, like the Octa tracks, to give it a trigger to start, because once the, the engine is running, um, the loop is always playing. Anyway, the gate mode is quiet until you open it. And the funny thing is, here you can pitch shift it and it's still on time. You know, I use this. Up. I'm recording. behind. I can switch off the metronome. 
probably a bad sounding chorus. Sorry. I write an automation. So that's the audio machine, how they call it. And then um, I want to use the sampler. For the sampler, I also will resample it, but I only will resample the guitar. So I go to sampling, source, internal, input, master, sync for bars, start, and let's go. It's in the sampler. The sampler has a polyphony of 64 voices. Um, again, I can. this is only one out of 16 instruments out of one group. Um, there can be 64 groups. And um, let's see what happens if I really want to know how the polyphony works in practice. So I go in the keyboard. That's okay. It's ADSR time. Now I want to have a one shot. You see, um, Tune start point. Unfortunately, the start point isn't mod. I cannot modulate the start point, which I miss. I really, really miss. Um, even if in the normal sampler you can do slices and you also can do a multi sample, which is pretty awesome. Um, but for now, we don't need that. Um, there's simple edit functions. Of course, I can like this and I can zoom in and stuff. That's as, as, as soon as you get used to how to treat it, it's quite, it's, it's a breeze. Um, truncate, normalize, reverse, fade in, fade out, fix, silence, blah, blah, blah. Everything you really desperately need is in here. I would need a modulator, a modulator on the start point. Actually, I would need a modulator bus on any parameter because I come to that in a second. So 64 voices, one shot. So it always plays the whole sample, the whole, the whole four bars. Um, module destination. I, I put a filter on it just to be sure it's not being too loud. one hiccup but the CPU was not higher than 48 so the whole thing cost me 15% of the CPU power wow I can also like I can play something like this or program like a very complex whatever and then I can um, resample myself put it into one file throw it away and then I have an, an, uh, something incredible something which I don't know of any machine in hardware that can do this. I mean, imagine the Digitac can play eight sounds. Um, it has a little bit more interesting modulation features, to be fair, per sound, but um, it's a little bit like this and all monophonic, each sound, and the machine can be um, 64 times polyphonic and like a blah. That's a freaking amount of processing power. Okay, I really, really like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to record a little pattern to show you something else, which the machine is capable of. Mm -hmm. Four bars again. So, um, there's this tiny little um, no, that's called lock. The lock means um, on any of the group, on any sound, it um, saves some kind of lock state from any parameter, 
which I can go back to. The lock state belongs to, it's like above the whole machine. There's also a possibility to, um, to do a macro, but the problem with the macro is they only belong to the sound or to the group area. So it's not really uh, being above all. If I'm on stage and if I'm going to do um, like a live performance, I instead of doing macros on each sound, I would love to do a, like only eight macros for the whole machine. It would be much better because then I'm like able to, um, to find out what parameter really is important and to, to tweak it. I mean, so for example, let me show you plugin. So to set a macro, I need to press shift and macro, which is quite a far way. I'm not sure if smaller hands are capable of I'm doing this. This is what I found out. Maybe there's another way. For example, the polarity, which is useless, um, feedback and type. And if I go in here, then I have those. But as soon as I switch the group, I'm somewhere else. So this is, for me, I don't like that too much. But those lock states are a weapon. It's a little bit like the crossfader from the Octatrack, but um, different. But then not so different because like right now I was pressing the lock and it came back immediately. If I press shift and lock, oh, there's different lock states. Oh, wow. There's 16 or 32, whatever. Let's go back. I don't need them But more importantly, a morphing parameter on, then I can morph. For example, I can travel in four bars from one state to the next state. Shall we try? Maybe I start something new, but inside this program, um, a tom and a shaker. By the way, the symbol sounds totally shit. Wow. What the? You guys should work on the symbol. Because I'm not sure if, if anyone's going to need that. The head is quite OK. OK, I, pr um, I switch. I engage the click, Mr. Director. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I need to do this again. Okay, we were talking about lock states. That means... Huh? I'm still on bank two. Ah, you see, the lock state um, also goes on the mute. Wow. Okay. I want to unmute. No, I want to mute them all. I just want to hear the new groove. I'm going to update this one. So I'm going to do a next one. It switches it on again. Oh. Which I don't want. Okay, so I tweak this. Next one. Should 
we switch on again, yeah, it makes total sense, of course. And the third one. So I got three different states and I say, um, please change from one state to the other in half a bar. Oh, you see the CPU meter? Wow. Jumps to 65. Wow. 67. <gasps> And now everything's on again. Okay, this is a killer feature, right? From here you can like be like a total organic machine that transforms into something completely different and comes back into four bars. Wow! Okay, then. The, um, the question of how can I make something out of a loop into something bigger? Um, I think the machine always had the scene type of thing. So um, a scene is a combination of patterns. Right now every group has one pattern. Um, I could f say I duplicate this pattern into the next one, also the groove, and from there I will tweak them a bit. I leave this groove here. Huh? I was wrong. I think I made something wrong. Yeah, I have to press pattern? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm now in the next one. Yeah, pattern two. Wait. Hey. Hey. There you go. Wait, I, I hate this group here. Blah, blah, blah. Clear. Go. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. So yeah, I said, I, I have it for a week. I don't know the very last doors which do some stuff. I'm pretty sure there's a, um, there's a reason why. So now the bass is empty. I got two different patterns on the guitar. I show you, it, I show it to you in a very simple way, but to get an idea. Um, so, I build another scene. Da, da, da. There you see, there you see, scene one, scene two. So um, I want to hear pattern one at scene two and pattern two at scene one to make it as complicated as possible. Good. Makes sense, right? Two different scenes. So what can I do with it? Of course, I could switch um, through all the scenes. Yeah, but I could also could um, put the machine into song mode. And then I build sections down here. Let's say four sections. I want to loop a section to make it easier. And then you see section one can be um, has an auto length and it's also it's looped. Um, section one is looped and then you see I can uh, apply a scene to a section. Da, da, da. And then section two shall be played by scene two. But I can also like switch off loop and then it just starts from the beginning. Okay, and then I can say I want to hear sec um, section 2 for 32 bars. And there you have it. You see, um, this is the way. I'm not, I, I also I saw uh, the clip option, but I got no idea what it is. <laughs> um, and I didn't find out um, for now. But the section 
Uh, this alone makes total sense for me. I don't know. It's it's like the most obvious way of um, starting from a pattern, going into a scene, which is a combination of patterns, and then um, you build basically you build sections which belong to scenes. I know it's there, but as soon as you work with it, it's very clear. To be honest, it's the first time I understand some type of song structure in that type of machine, um, pretty much immediately. Um, because all the other ones, the arranger in, in the Octa track is total math, rocket science for me. I don't get how the um, song mode in the black box is made. So um, here I'm pretty much amazed on how simple and effective this problem of doing something longer is solved. Let me just quickly change into um, something I already made. Da, da, da. projects, then you go to user, and I did 25 different new project after crash, hectic turtle, a harp phase, um, I want to play house. That's a creative name, this card. So I tried to just simply do like a proper groove with it. Um, yes, it works, of course it does. What I want to show you is um, the compressor on the second page has the input source which can be any audio from any of the groups inside the machine to um, work as the modulator inside the sidechain path. So that's why this um, ducking, where this ducking effect comes from. I could also use the gate. I could also use the filter. Oh, vocal bass drum, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are possibilities to mix quite high on a high level because of this because you can like decide okay which sounds needs to be in the forefront for example the freaking bass drum on any house track um, and that ducks away everything else and um, this is very elegant in a sense what would be even more elegant would be a modulating bus which can modulate any parameter the lock states which are incredible show that the, the engine itself is capable of, of, of tweaking any parameter, just like a creature. But um, if there would, instead of going from a fixed state to the next fixed state, I would love to have a, a form of sidechain or modulating bus that um, gives me another LFO independent from the uh, instrument or the sampler or whatever I use. It's basically, I'm using Bitwig on the computer and um, the developers from this machine should open Bitwig and go to the left down corner with this um, uh, file, uh, sorry, uh, um, and see they should have a look at the Bitwig modulating system because this is pretty much the most high tech modulating system there is outside in the world. My conclusion I'm going to start with the things that I don't like. I don't like the native instruments. Um, preset capitalism thing. Um, I think they lost a lot of their reputation during the last years because they, it felt from the outside, it felt like, okay, you want to sell us shitloads of presets. You want to make a bigger complete with so many presets that not one person can hear during his whole life, which is fine for the preset designers because they make a living out of it, but it's not about creativity at all. It's just like firing mm -hmm samples. It's a better version of firing samples because you can tweak them a little bit better. So I'm afraid that they're going to pull their effort, that they're going to 
uh, focus their effort on their um, preset channel inside this machine because it obviously has it right um, it's going to talk it, it talks to mom and it, it can de be delivered with new um, material what i want is a proper tool which i can use by myself and i'm willing to pay for this tool but i'm not willing to pay for one trillions of presets so this is probably the the biggest issue with native instruments in general but this machine, I gotta go, I gotta switch to a positive thing, is so well made in terms of how it feels, how the pads are playable. It's, I love those pads. It's really, they feel totally natural for me. Um, this um, 35,000 function knob on the left is incredible. It's really, really good. It feels really, really good. So um, I have hope, I hope the best for the company to be able to um, kind of reinvent themselves to get back to their roots which always were very impressive something i don't like is the i, I already mocked about are those um, symbols for the sampler and then you have the parameters on the different pages underneath i want a proper visual interface that includes those encoders inside a visual interface i don't need a symbol and it's a waste of space and then of course you have this plus button but here's one button left and put the plus to here and i need to switch to the all the different types of the the different effects i have after the sampler with those buttons anyway so um i don't know i don't understand this i'm this is the heritage from the software um version but get rid of it please it only has one midi out and only one stereo out which isn't true actually because you can configure the phone's output to be independent and then you can use this as um, output 2 which is a second stereo out so of course you can route um, audio um, away from the main out and uh, to somewhere out there and then record it back again i'm talking um, effects or filters or whatever also the midi in and out you can without a problem just plug an external MIDI interface into it and it's there in the settings go to MIDI input devices da 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 ESI M4U um, the MIDI interface is there also the USB out is um, strong enough to power an external synth which is powered by things Da, da, da. Oh, it's already recognized. You hear it's playing the bass drum. And also, here it is Boutique MIDI 1 input enabled, output enabled. And also, it, uh, it disconnects the MIDI through. So I can use the. It, it's really, really good. This is really, really good. I really love that. Having those two next to each other. Woo! Let me see. Projects. I think it's in instruments. Where is it? There are templates coming with it. Probably instruments, sounds, groups, templates, um, which are which have the MIDI CCs pre-configured for external gear. It's, it's quite a long list. The microfreak isn't there, which I'm which I'm I'm, I'm missing the microfreak. <laughs> um, yeah, but this works really well. And then of course you have to connect the audio. Would be even better if it could work if it anyway. Um, I heard, I read somewhere that they are already, I think on Sound on Sound, that they are um, working on using the USB ports for audio interfaces, so you can have much more inputs. Um, you, on some stages I see that the, theoretically it's possible right now, but the physical outputs aren't there yet. So, um, I mean, this is really really powerful this is really powerful and of course a machine like that you cannot power this thing by battery how fast would this battery go on? like um or how heavy would this machine be of course you can use an, an external battery pack you can use it anyway for any machine the question is how big is it going to be and how long it's going to last how long it's going to last um i'm totally fine for having this on a desk next to i don't need this in a park I, it's too, I don't know. So for me, this is not at all a minus that there's no battery in there. Um, the filters don't sound good. 
I say it as clear as it is. The only filter that I actually want to use are the ones inside the group, which uh, come with the perform FX. Because here you don't hear a difference if the filter is engaged or not, or the other ones, the ones on the master out, which is totally crazy. Why did you have? Why do you have a filter that already cuts something up or down in the in the moment when you engage it? Um, please work on the filters to give me the the full neutral position which I need in a digital filter. And the reverb sounds very bad, not really good. Um, but I know the Raum plugin, the Raum algorithm from, from Native Instruments, I'm surely going to change that. Okay, there's two more things that I miss. First thing, I want to modulate the starting point from the sampler um, via the LFO. And as I need to say it again, I need uh, some kind of modulating bus to have total freedom of modulation. Give me LFO step sequences and so on, and let me route them on wherever I want. Um, I know I, I, I have no idea where to implement this on the hardware, to be honest, so I understand why they don't have it, but um, the engine should be capable of doing this and maybe in the future. So what I really like about the machine, the way it feels is probably the best feeling machine out there. The pads are simply incredible. I've never played such natural feeling pads that adapt to my playing style immediately. Thank you for that. Um, in the end, this is what counts because we use, oh, we're using our fingers, we're not using a mouse, we're using real hardware. Um, the, the, the dimensions are made for finger, for fingers, for our hands. I like that. This is really, really cool. Um, I was thinking of give me polyphony on the Monarch or make it a little bit more efficient because it's going to kill 20%. One instant, one tone kills 20% of the CPU. So um, a polyphonic Monarch, which would, let's say, four voice polyphony would go up to 80%. But I think it's worth it because then it's suddenly a real, real good sounding um, four voice synth. I need a tweakable, on the machine, tweakable polyphonic synth. I don't want to go into the massive on the computer and build a freaking interesting patch and then the macros and then use the um, preset, look for it, where is it in my Windows folder, and then put it on the SD card, then rescan the SD card to be able to use this. This somewhere, it's like, I don't know. I want to do this inside the machine. I think that's the idea. But the sound engine itself is really, really good already. So I had a lot of fun. In the beginning, I was like, meh. And then I was like, okay, I can do this. Oh, I can do this. Oh, wow. Oh, there's this log states. And um, I, can, I can imagine using this as, as a, one of the main tools. I have the feeling that this is like uh, the start of something bigger, something which we don't recognize right now. Of course, Native Instruments has very, very many good algorithms in there. Still, I'm afraid that they're going to use this for supplying um, presets by this sample pack, by this sample pack. And really, I have this, I'm afraid of that because the algorithms themselves are really good, but um, having this long list of presets just confuses. So I'm sure it's really, it depends on which direction they want to go in the future to make this thing really important or make it a preset machine.
So the difference between the controller software combination and the controller being the machine itself is you cannot surf on fucking Facebook with this thing.